Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching another Jscape MFT Server tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to automatically forward FTP uploads to an SFTP server. When would you need to transfer files from FTP to SFTP? The ability to receive files via FTP and then forward them out via SFTP can be particularly useful if the receiving FTP server is behind your corporate firewall and you want to forward files to a remote SFTP server. Transferring files over a secure file transfer protocol like SFTP instead of just plain FTP would allow you to thwart eavesdroppers who may be sniffing on the network. SFTP encrypts data while it's in transit. This kind of protection is needed especially in highly insecure networks like the internet. We highly recommend you read the blog post Countering Packet Sniffers Using Encrypted FTP to understand the risks of transferring files via plain FTP. Just click the link in the description. Let's now proceed with the steps for this tutorial. First, you need to verify whether your FTP services are up and running. Make sure you have the FTP service running on your installation of Jscape MFT server. If you have everything set up, it's really just a matter of going into the services node, clicking add, and then adding the required services. However, if you're just getting started, I would recommend you start by reading the following articles. Setting up a Linux FTP server, or you could read the documentation. I provided the link to that again in the description. Here's how your services panel should look like after you've added the FTP service. Next, let's add a trigger that fires after an FTP upload. Now that you have the services up and running, the next step would be to add a trigger that would respond to each FTP upload. In this scenario, the upload can come from either an FTP client or another FTP server, which in this case would be acting as a client to your MFT server. Go to the Triggers module, then go to Triggers tab, and then click Add. When the next window appears, give the trigger a name. For example, Forward FTP Upload to SFTP Server. After that, expand the Event Type drop-down list, and then select File Upload. Click the Next button to proceed. You'll now be brought into the Trigger Conditions window. Here you can specify certain conditions that would filter out uploads whose files you wouldn't want to forward to the SFTP server. Like for example, HTTPS uploads or SFTP uploads. So for instance, you could specify the server port that received the uploaded file. For FTP, that would usually be port 21. Therefore, you could add the following expression in the trigger conditions box. You can find more variables, functions, operators, etc. by clicking on the buttons at the bottom of that screen. Once you're done, just click the next button. Now it's time to add the trigger action. A trigger action is the action you want the trigger to carry out in response to the file upload. In our case, we'd like the trigger to forward or upload the recently uploaded file to an SFTP server. One action that's suitable for this purpose is the SFTP file upload trigger action. Click the add button to start adding the trigger action. Select the SFTP file upload trigger action and then click OK. Here you would need to enter pertinent details such as the hostname. This is the hostname or IP address the SFTP service will be listening on. Port number. This is the port number used by the SFTP service. That's normally port 22. Timeout value. This is the time in seconds before the session times out. Username. This is the username of the account on the SFTP server that will be used for logging in. Password. This is the corresponding password of that account. Local file. This is the local file that will be uploaded. Note that we use the local path variable. In this particular context, this variable contains the complete local path of the file that was recently uploaded. And lastly, remote directory. This is a virtual path on the remote server. A forward slash stands for the root directory of the account used for logging in. Leave the rest of the settings as is for now and click the OK button to proceed. You should then see your newly created trigger action among the list of trigger actions. 
In this case, there's only one. Click OK to proceed. Once you're back at the main screen, you should see your newly created trigger. If you already have an existing SFTP trading partner, you can use Trading Partner File Upload instead of SFTP File Upload for your trigger action. Using a trading partner entity offers significant benefits. We suggest you read the article Preparing Trading Partner Servers for SFTP Automation to understand the advantages of using trading partner objects, as well as to learn how to set up a trading partner for SFTP. Again, a link to that article is provided below. Because this is a trading partner based trigger action, there's no need to specify the host name, port number, username, and password. Just select the trading partner from the drop down list and then specify the local file and remote directory. That's it, all files that will be uploaded to this server via FTP will be automatically forwarded to the remote SFTP server.